What's up, everybody? Welcome to another live Q and A. If you're just joining us, we're gonna switch it up today. We're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna be totaling everybody's sales, right? So if you're if you're doing e-commerce, put your sales in the comments. Your average monthly sales. So, and we're gonna total them all up. I want to see how much how much money everybody's making on on e-commerce here. So welcome to another live Q&A. We do these weekly. We're here every week to answer your questions about e-commerce, entrepreneurship, growing a business, delegating tasks, hiring employees, whatever the case may be. That is what we're here to answer. That is what we're here to do. Appreciate all of you joining. We got some people leaving some sales in the comments here. So we got 60K, we got 110K. This is gonna be impossible to keep up with. We got 30K um, and also we got 60, we got 500, 60, that's 500. We got 275, we got 120. Wow, this is crazy, this is impressive. We got 215, look at all this money people are making selling physical products online. We got 800K, so just right there, what do we got? That's a million, that's just right there, we got $3 million. So just right there, this is the opportunity that presents itself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Between nine people, $3 million in monthly sales. So. These are the reasons why I host these lives and these are the reasons why I answer all your questions because there's so much opportunity to grow a successful business through e-commerce and really crush it, especially right now with a lot of people shopping from home. You know, they're not going to stores, they're buying a lot of their products on marketplaces like Amazon and eBay and Shopify and Walmart and Target. All of these marketplaces are getting a ton of traffic because people don't wanna leave their house. It's very volatile out there. A lot of crazy shit happening. So it's more comforting for people to stay in their homes. So now I'm gonna open it up if you got any questions. Damn bro, did you see that Robin Hood bull Yeah, I saw the Robin Hood. I actually, uh, I got it pulled up right now. GameStop is at 261 post market. It closed at 193. I actually took a short position like three days ago. Uh, so I'm not in the money at all right now. But listen, it's it's unfortunate, you know. These 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 suits, I'll call them, have been manipulating the market for decades, and now all of a sudden, some some regular Joes uh, come together and, and make something happen, and all of a sudden, they're shutting down trading platforms. It's it's unfortunate. Um, you know, but I think some changes are possibly going to be made. And I just actually, I have a Robin Hood account. I, I have a small amount of money in there. I don't use it as my main trading platform. Um, but I just got an email from them a couple minutes ago talking about, you know, how it was a decision based on all these other decisions. And it was just like, it was basically the runaround bull crap email, you know, because they actually, they had a hundred thousand reviews. And for anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, we're talking about, um, there's some stocks, AMC, GameStop, um, that were shorted and, and, and regular buyers like me and you started purchasing a lot of them. The stock price rose ridiculously and it put Wall Street out, you know, billions of dollars. So it was, uh, it was causing an issue in Robinhood and Tastyworks and E-Trade. We all got emails today stating that they were closing down trading for these, for these stocks that were super volatile and, and raising in price and it caused mayhem. And, and in just a couple hours, Robinhood had over 100,000 reviews on the Play Store and it got down to a one star rating. So that's just the power of the people. Like us as people, we have so much power. But let's get back to the e-commerce. I'm here to answer any questions. Thanks for keeping it real on Clubhouse, other other snakes trying to sell snakes, oh, snakes oil. Yeah, man, for, Clubhouse is dope. You know, for any of you not on Clubhouse, you gotta definitely check it out. It's the, uh, loads of knowledge on Clubhouse. Are you guys part of my buying group? Any buying groups? No, we're not part of any buying groups. We are the buying group. You know, we build the relationships, we harvest the relationships, we leverage the relationships, and we essentially crush it. I'm actually working. We just opened a new account with this company. They sent us five different catalogs, brand catalogs, so they represent large um, brands like 3M and some other ones that I'm not going to name. But uh, I'm scraping their catalogs actually as we speak. It's uploading to our... Uh, our proprietary UPC scraper and I'm going to go through them after this live and, and start putting an order together. Uh, Sebastian and I, we worked on an order collectively yesterday. It was about 
I want to say forty thousand dollars. He added a couple products. I added a couple products. Our buyers are always putting together orders. Um, we we actually and this is this is to touch on the buying group's comment. So I think it's important, right? And I know there's a bunch of other questions here, but I'm the king of tangents. So I'm gonna keep going off on tangents. So just bear with me here, but it's important to talk about this. One of the things that we do is we keep a Rolodex of distributors that we've done business with. So today, like literally today, this morning, six hours ago, we just picked up a $50,000 order from a company we haven't done business with in almost three years. Three years we haven't done business with them. They were one of the companies that were like with us at the foundation and the start of our business six, seven years ago. We did a lot of business with them and then their their margins started getting less and less and we realized we were just turning inventory to turn inventory. So we stepped away for a couple of years. They reached back out in between those couple of years. They offered us some products, but the prices just weren't working for us. So we didn't go back to them. But now finally there was an opportunity and we just picked up in almost a $50,000 order from them. So it's important, I can't stress it enough, leveraging these relationships. Um, any strategy to keep costs down on shipping pallets? Cost is 24 cents a pound. Yeah, so that's a great question. And, and the best, so the best rates you're gonna get on shipping pallets is truckload rates. You know, you can get a truckload depending on how far, what facility you're shipping from, or two rather, you can get a truckload for between six and $800. So let's say average, our average truckload has about 10,000 items on it. So if you're spending $600 for a 10,000 unit truckload, it's gonna cost you six cents per unit. Now the pound math on that, uh, most of our products are right around a pound, so it's about the same. It's usually the pound math is a little higher than the than the unit math. But I like to do the unit math um, because then that gives me a number to go off of when I'm analyzing products. Like for us, I know our shipping to Amazon cost is about three and a half to four cents, depending on the week. Um, but average, we'll just call it four cents per unit. So I know that when we're sending out a full truckload of 10,000 units, it's gonna be about 400 additional dollars to ship that truckload. So to answer your question, leverage, first of all, you shouldn't be using uh, Amazon Partner Carrier. Right now, I'm literally getting dozens of DMs a week talking about how it's taking three, four, five weeks for people to receive their inventory because they're using Amazon Partner Carrier. So I personally highly recommend staying away from Amazon Partner Carrier and leveraging other third-party carriers to pick up your products and drop them off. And if you're sending LTL, max that out. Instead of sending two pallets, send four. Because the larger the shipment is, the cheaper per unit per pound the shipment is going to cost. What's the minimum profit per unit you would suggest if I use a prep service? So it really depends what the prep service is charging you. That depends on, are you getting a volume discount? Are you just starting? You know, I, I know that prep service fees can vary from 60 cents all the way up to $3, depending on how complicated the prepping is. If you're getting, you know, bubble, uh, bubble bagged and poly bagged and multi pack and variety packs and, and bundles, like the, the cost can get expensive. So I, I, I would say analyze what your current fees are for your prep center and then make a decision based on what kind of profit you're trying to bring in. I know for us, our minimum buying requirements, and they're, it's not a blanket statement, there's always except, exceptions to the rule, but it's $2. I wanna be making at least $2 on a product. And a lot of people, they're like, $2? How are you only gonna make $2 on a product? All right, but A, 50% of that covers our production, right? So that means if I could get a product and that's like expenses, 50% of that goes to expenses. So sell a product for $2, that means $1 nets into my pocket, nets into the company's pocket. So if I can sell, like right now we sell 8,000 items a day, that's $8,000 in net profit daily. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking big game. I'm thinking long game here. And that's where I'm trying to get all your headspace at. It's like long, long game, playing the long game. You know, I'm going for that, that long pass downtown. And I'm trying to run the clock out because like, I want to build a substantial business that can generate money for the next five to seven years, if not longer. And then I can cash out. But like, I'm not focused on making mega bucks every single day. I want that consistent money. 
You know, and right now it's turned into mega bucks. But I think with some analyzation of your current expenses, your current packaging fees, you could really hammer down on that number and crush it. How many weeks are the weekly coaching calls for the course members? Uh, Henry, you get 12 when you sign up at the main option the course option you get 12 weeks and there is an option to renew those which most of our members do renew them because that's their favorite part of it don't get me wrong the course content is just mind-blowing but most of the members enjoy extending those weekly calls for another six months eight months 12 months uh, because they love having that interaction we've really harvested like a wonderful community of successful amazon sellers that meet every single monday night for two hours and just kick the shit and talk about amazon growth and and help them with their trials and tribulations so it's it's super exciting henry and we'd love to have you on board what is a healthy budget to launch a new product on amazon so if you're talking private label you definitely want to have at least a couple grand um, and I'm talking you want to have two grand just for just for advertising to really launch your product get it off the ground I see it happen all the time someone literally has two grand all together they have two thousand dollars so they spend let's say 600 on the product and then another three or four hundred on shipping so now their two thousand becomes one thousand then they get the product in and you know and then then they start running some ads or they pay for erp so now it's down to like 900 um and then something happens and they got to fix the photo now it's down to 850 and like before you know what their budget for advertising 600 bucks and it's like, and then they wonder why their product didn't take off. And it's because they, they didn't have the funds to invest in advertising. I've, we've done it over all the time. My, my team and I, specifically my team, I built a lot of listings as well, but my team's the one who really builds some of these powerhouse listings. Um, you know, they, they've built hundreds of listings and a lot of them fail. We put a lot of work into them and then they fail and they don't take off, but we just cut ties. You know, if it's not selling after 45 days, it's probably never gonna sell. If I've adjusted the keywords and the SEO and, and played around with the images and played around with the video and uh, switched up the ads and did some social media links and some coupons and some deals of the day and some lightning deals. If it's not moving, it's not gonna move. What company do you use for insurance when you had a smaller warehouse? Uh, ecom.insure.com. Check them out. Ecom.insure.com. Check them out, my friend. Do you recommend doing RA and transition slowly to wholesale? Listen, RA is great for growing capital. At the end of the day, we grew a lot of capital doing RA. So if you're in the position where funds are a little tighter, you don't really have the space, then absolutely leverage retail arbitrage and then make the transition to, to wholesale. The transition doesn't have to happen overnight. It might take you 18 months to make that transition. That's okay. But if retail arbitrage is generating some serious revenue for you, then you want to continue doing retail arbitrage because it's bringing in the paper. And cash is king in any business. The more money you have, the bigger your business will grow. That's why for the first two years, we threw every single penny back into the company. So I think, listen, if you're doing retail arbitrage right now and it's working, set some goals up. Make it in, in 30 days, I wanna have 5% of my business wholesale. In 90 days, I wanna have 15% of my business wholesale. In 180 days, I wanna have 25% of my business wholesale. So ease into it, doesn't have to happen overnight. Who's this couponing said, you're a great clubhouse speaker, when will you host your own chat room? Um, so I, I do about three, three a week. Life has just been crazy, my friends, between Amazon and the consulting business and the wholesale and just running around in life. And then my girl was up last weekend and it was just crazy. So um, I jump on there when I'm available. I was actually thinking it was either it was either this live video or Clubhouse and I, I picked this live video. So I'm here with y'all right now, enjoying the time. I've been trying to get to open an account with Unishippers for a week. Nobody calls me back for my quote, so I ended up using Amazon Carrier Partner. Do you have any direct contact? I do not have a direct contact, but I would just Google them, and I'm sure you could find somebody's contact. And, and you know what, Gustavo, I'm gonna check my email. I, I, I have a contact number of someone you could call. I don't know how helpful it will be, but at least it's someone else in the company who will pick up the phone, you know? <laughs> Anybody else addicted to coffee? Let me know, but like this video if you're addicted to coffee because I don't know if I'm addicted. 
I guess I'm not addicted because it's like it, it's completely different. Like I don't need it. I would die. I wouldn't be like sick if I didn't have it, you know. But I love it. Let's keep it real. I love it. Um, how many distributors do you work with routinely? Uh, so we have five or six weekers, right? Like weekly, weekly distributors where every single week we're placing orders with them. Those are, well, we, I guess like if you were to consider it in stock terms, those are like our large cap companies, right? So we have five or six, which, you know, 70% of our business is invested in those five or six distributors, maybe 60 to 70% are invested in those large cap distributors. And then we got another 10 or 15, which we'll call in stock terms, mid cap distributors, right? Which are just like smaller companies, not national distributors, not well-known distributors, smaller and little pockets of the different car parts of the country who carry maybe specific product lines or specific categories of products. And we work with them and we place maybe bi-weekly orders with them. And then we have smaller companies that we might only place an order with once a month. Like there's this company local to us that every month I place an order with them. It may even be every 40 days, 45 days. Um, the order's always right around $8,000 and the profit on it's always $8,000. It's just consistent. It's like every 30 or 45 days for the past year, I place this order with this company and they bring us $8,000 in gross profit. And it's usually, you know, only 600 to 1,000 ASINs. And it's just, we, we just pump them into Amazon. And they're great movers. And the order's always like four or five different SKUs. So it's not a huge order. But, and it literally takes me seven minutes to put it together. I just look at the sales for those four products, do a quick little keep a chart, look at the competitive sellers, bickety bam, send it to the distributor, and it's ready to rock. So long story short, we probably work with 25 to 30 distributors consistently on a monthly basis. And we just opened about eight new accounts. Um, I said earlier, I'm actually putting together an order with one of those accounts right now. What's a good percentage of your total capital to invest into wholesale when you're starting off if you have 25K total? So if you're going all in, First thing I would do, and this is full transparency, I'd take three to $5,000 of that and I would purchase our program because the amount of time it's going to save you in the long run, I can promise you will be the best investment you've made in 2021. I, I personally guarantee that. It will, it will change the whole trajectory of your business. Um, and then as far as investing capital, I would start with about half of what's left. So I would, I would start with $10,000 and I'd split that up between about two or three different distributors. So I'd place you know, a $3,000 order here, $3,000 order here, $3,000 order here. And then I analyze those products in three to four weeks, see what works, see what didn't, place a reorder, add SKUs to that order, and just rinse, wash, and repeat day in and day out. Advice for a good pitch when calling a distributor that you're interested in trying to buy wholesale from. Yeah. Hey, my name's Eric. And I operate a large e-commerce distribution company in northern New Jersey. You know, we ship thousands of products monthly to customers across the nation. I'm very interested in some of the product categories that you sell. And I would love to get a catalog, preferably with UPCs, pricing, case pack, and quantities in stock. And we can whip up an order in the next couple of days. And I'd love to grow a long-term relationship. Something along those lines. Don't overthink it. Be transparent, be straight to the point, let them know what you're looking for, and, and bickety-bam, just like that. What software would you recommend for selling on Amazon? Uh, I would recommend four softwares, or maybe three. Uh, Keepa, 100%, you, you definitely need a Keepa account. Um, I would recommend Keepa without a doubt. DS QuickView is another one, and then you need some sort of FBA calculator like RevSeller or um, what's it called? AMZ Scout, which is a free Chrome extension. You could use that. Um, so those are the three I would recommend just off the top of my head. And I think we have a YouTube video or we do have a YouTube video. Um, so if you scroll down from this, uh, you'll see it. Maybe like th I would just type in Amazon Lit um, software, Amazon software will populate. But it, it goes over like the five or six and, and they're linked in the in the description and everything. So definitely check that out. When reaching out to suppliers, do you attach your seller's permit in the email? Uh, usually not in the initial contact. It really depends. It depends if they have like a website that asks for it. But the first email is usually just an introduction. Like, hey, I'm E. I'm interested in opening an account. Would love to provide your company a lot of new business. 
we have the opportunity to collectively grow up together. I could ship your products all, all across the country to millions of different customers, and I think there's a huge opportunity here. Um, so if you can let me know what information you'd like me to share with you, then send that over. Because not everybody wants a resale certificate. I, I own a wholesale company. The only, com the only sellers or businesses I want resale certificates from from my wholesale company are people who are located in New Jersey. Because everybody else, I don't need that information. So like you don't want to send them something if they don't need it. Have you guys thought of expanding into more warehouses locations? Yeah, we're actually, our lease is up here. What is it? I think we have one year left here. I think we have a little over a year, like a year and four months left here, which is crazy. The time has flown by in this place, my friends. But yeah, we're considering a larger space. We're also considering something in the Midwest kind of expand, save on shipping to the West Coast, you know? How do you get the little guy to get a big account with a reputable company? So I would, listen, a lot of these, a lot of these accounts are gonna ask for trade references, right? So getting in with that big account initially might be challenging. I get this, this message all the time, like, hey, you know, I reached out to blah, 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 and they want three trade references and they can't be Uline or UPS or they don't want them to be my bank. They gotta be other reputable wholesalers. So that may be an issue for you. So I would encourage you start a little smaller, start with the, the mid size or the small size distributors. It will A, teach you a lot about harvesting the relationship and growing together. B, it will allow you to have a trade reference so you can add it to those trade references. And C, it will just enhance your experience of communication and communication is key in every relationship. I think communication, the 99% of the world's problems stem from a lack of communication. Think about the last argument you had. It probably could have been avoided with communication. I think about my relationship with my family. Most issues that come up, which aren't crazy issues, but just like the day to day, communication would fix them. My girl, communication would fix them. At work, communication would fix them. So a lot of these problems could just be solved with proper communication. Uh, how do you find me on Clubhouse? That is a great question. So you could just type in my name, Eric Castellano, or you can search my tag or my at, at Amazon Lit, one word, Amazon Lit. Search it up, give me a follow, I'll see you in one of the rooms. Does Amazon have space, space, in quotation marks for more Amazon sellers. Do you agree? Find products, is it hard? In the beginning. So the beginning's gonna be hard. In the beginning of anything's hard. First time you rode a bike, hard. First time you played basketball, hard. First time you took a math test, hard. Right, anything in the beginning is gonna be hard. So yeah, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be rewarding, it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be exciting, it's gonna be scary, but yeah, it's gonna be hard. Um, and to answer your first question, which I love this question, we just had a clubhouse room. The, the entire topic was this question, is it too late to start selling on Amazon? And my answer, and everybody else's in the room answer, there was probably 80 people in this room, was absolutely not, it's not too late. If anything, now is the best time to start selling. I honestly think you could, in this day and age, you could build a business faster than we built our business, it took about seven years. You could probably do what we did in five years because you now have access to about 50 million more Prime members than we had access to seven years ago. Amazon was a smaller marketplace. It was a little less competitive, but there also wasn't as many shoppers on it. So the opportunity is just, it's its truly amazing. Does your pricer have a clearance option? The ability to lower your price after X days stock? Yes, it does. Um, but it won't go lower than the floor price. So floor price is like, um, it's like the wall, right? That it just, it will never, there's no option in, I don't, I've never seen a repricer with an option where you set a floor price and that option overrides that floor price and lets you go less. Floor price means exactly that. Like you, you're hitting the floor, that's it. There's no more room to go. Which seller app is your favorite? I like the Amazon seller app. It shows all my sales. You know? No, I don't know. I don't have a favorite. I don't use any seller apps like on my phone, like to scan stuff. Like, you know, once in a while I'll be in, in BJ's or something, I'll scan something with my phone or Marshall's uh, just to see where, you know, the opportunity that exists out there. But I don't really have a favorite seller's app. Are reseller certificates only to New Jersey? Didn't know 
that. No, 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 no. I think you misunderstood. Uh, only because I'm located in New Jersey as a wholesaler, I only need to receive resale certificates from sellers who are located in New Jersey. But a lot of national distributors, they want your resale certificate um, stating that you're, you know, you've registered with the state to, so they don't have to pay taxes on them. It's like a tax exemption. Why didn't you buy your warehouse and when you move, rent it out? Um, so we thought about buying this warehouse four years ago or three and a half years ago when we moved in. But the reason why we didn't is because we didn't have the capital at that time. You know, we just didn't have the funding to invest in the warehouse uh, to purchase it. So we ended up renting it. But yeah, you can absolutely buy a warehouse. Uh, how can you tell if a distributor or vendor is a scammer or trustworthy. I've, I don't think I've ever had an, an, a bad experience with a vendor. I've had a vendor send me questionable products that I was able to return to them just because like the, the codes were off or just like the, the package seams just didn't look quite right. But just Google them. A lot of these companies have reviews on Google. Just Google them. People will talk about them. If someone's had a poor experience, it will be on the internet. Uh, but you know, Google, Google's a crazy place. When you get approved for grocery, is it all grocery? Yes, unless it's a specific brand that's restricted within grocery, then you would need a separate approval for that. Hey, can you recommend a warehouse management system? I cannot, I cannot recommend one because I never used one that I was happy with the results from it. So we actually ended up building our own. Um, we've tried, I can't even think of them. We tried like six of them just off the top of my head. Um, but there was like, it was just, it wasn't helpful. And here's the, here's the issue. Uh, because warehouses for Amazon companies, there's so many different identification numbers. There's FN SKUs, Merchant SKUs, ASINs, UPCs, GTINs. There's just so many different aspects. And then an ASIN can have multiple Merchant SKUs connected to it and multiple FN SKUs connected to it. And it and an ASIN could have multiple UPCs connected to it if it's a variety pack or a bundle. So the sh it just gets crazy. I'm telling you, crazy. And any of these straight out the box warehouse management systems for e-commerce companies, they we broke all of them. So I would say honestly, what we did for a while was Google Sheets. You know, and I know it's not a it's not a long term solution there, but what you really what would be your best bet would be getting one of these out of the box warehouse management systems that can you can tap into their back end and bringing on a web developer to to make it your own. So like using that as the foundation and then building off of that. But yeah, everybody. This was super fun. I love I love talking to y'all. I can't wait till COVID clears up. We're gonna be flying around the country seeing you all in person, hosting free meetups. You hang out, we'll eat some food, talk the talk, and just kick it. You know, I'm excited for that to happen. So I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a beautiful afternoon. Stay grateful and stay lit.